The Cretaceous period was the time of the rapid development for the dinosaurs. Across the world, these ancient creatures have evolved into many impressive forms, each one fighting for dominance in the battle for survival. The Cretaceous was a time when some of the most awe-inspiring herbivores and most terrifying predators roamed the planet. Imagine a towering Argentinosaurus reaching a height of seven stories. A formidable Carcharodontosaurus that looks even more threatening than the name suggests. Or a heavily armored Ankylosaurus, armed with a club-shaped tail. None of these creatures were willing to give up an inch, and the competition never ceased as there was an endless struggle for the right to survive. Only the strongest and toughest species could secure a place at the top of the food chain. But this great era of dinosaur domination ended abruptly and catastrophically with a truly harrowing event that led to the tragic extinction of most dinosaur species and forever changed the course of life on Earth. The end of the Jurassic period marks the beginning of the Cretaceous period, the final period of the Mesozoic era. It spanned over a long period of time from 145 to 65 million years ago. During this time, many different types of dinosaurs developed on our planet, including some of the largest and most iconic creatures to ever exist. As the Jurassic gave way to the Cretaceous, dominant fauna began to change and new groups of dinosaurs, such as the ceratopsians and theropods, grew to carry increasingly more importance. The Cretaceous period is divided into two epochs, Early Cretaceous and Late Cretaceous. The Early Cretaceous period, which took place between 145 and 100 million years ago, saw the diversification of dinosaurs and the emergence of new groups, such as orinthopods and sauropods. This was also the time when the first birds evolved from the small feathered theropods. The late Cretaceous, which took place between 100 and 65 million years ago, brought even more dramatic changes to Earth. One of the most significant events of this time was the tectonic breakup of the Pangaea supercontinent into separate land masses of Laurasia and Gondwana, which ultimately led to the formation of modern continents. This created the conditions for the evolution of unique dinosaur fauna on every continent. New environment also led to the emergence of new types of dinosaurs adapted to the specific conditions of their habitat. The late Cretaceous was also the epoch that saw the appearance of the first flowering plants, which had a major impact on the ecosystems of that time making changes to food chains and the ways dinosaurs interacted with flora. Furthermore, as sea levels began to rise, flooding low-lying areas and creating the shallow waters we see today, it gave way for the new marine ecosystems to develop. At the time, the aquatic life was bountiful and varied. As the Cretaceous period went on, the continents began to slowly shift apart and take on their current form. The once unified landmass of Pangaea gradually gave way to the separate landmasses of Laurasia and Gondwana, and eventually the modern continents we know today. Due to this event, the dinosaurs that once roamed freely across Pangaea were now isolated on their respected landmass, surrounded by unique and distinctive flora and fauna. During the Cretaceous, the Earth was ruled by gigantic creatures each with their own unique strengths and weaknesses. At the heart of the North American continent, a fierce battle was about to unfold between the most powerful predators and the most persistent herbivores. Tyrannosaurus rex, the king of the predators, roamed the land in search of his next prey. It was one of the largest land predators ever to have existed, reaching a length of 39 feet weighing about seven tons. Armed with massive jaws and razor-sharp teeth up to six inches in length, it was a formidable adversary for any creature it came across. The discovery journey of the Tyrannosaurus rex began at the end of the 19th century, when the first remains of this mighty predator were discovered in the western United States. This discovery was a milestone in paleontology 
and as it was one of the most complete and largest dinosaurs to have ever been discovered at the time. The first specimen discovered was on display at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. The T-Rex had powerful jaws with a bite force of over 12,800 pounds, making it one of the strongest animal bites ever recorded. It's assumed that a T-Rex was also a fast runner. Catching up to its prey, the T-Rex could reach speeds of up to 20 miles per hour. Triceratops, in turn, was one of the few creatures that could stand up to the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex. Triceratops was a large herbivorous dinosaur that looked somewhat like a modern rhinoceros. They reached up to 29 feet in length and weighed up to 12 tons. Triceratops had a massive head, with its skull making up a third of its entire body. It also had a bone frill around its head, and this frill was made of carotene and blood vessels similar to the feathers of a modern bird, and it suggests that like the birds, Triceratops may have been sporting vibrant colors. The colors likely played an important role in socializing, as well as demonstrating the specimen's strength or signaling dominance to potential mates or rivals. Fossilized skulls of Triceratops have been repeatedly found with abrasions and dents, indicating confrontation with rivals, including predators and fellow Triceratops in the battle for territory or partners. One such specimen even had a broken horn and tooth marks, and they could be matched to a Tyrannosaurus rex bite. However, fossil studies have shown that the dinosaur itself died of natural causes. This shows that with its three horns and protective bony frill, the Triceratops was a formidable opponent for any predator. At the same time, a heavily armored Ankylosaurus roamed the land on the territory of the modern USA and Canada. It reached 29 feet in length and a weight of about seven tons. The Ankylosaurus is also known for its distinctive body armor, which includes thick, bony plates and a club-shaped tail. This armor made the Ankylosaurus virtually invulnerable to predator attacks. In particular, the club-shaped tail was one of its most striking features. Formed from several large fused bones, it created a bone mass at the end of the tail that weighed several hundred pounds and this mass was used as a defense against predators that could be swung with great force, breaking bones and even killing the attacker. This unique adaptation, along with its armor, allowed the Ankylosaurus to survive in an environment where predators constantly hunted for food. Another unique inhabitant of North America was the Pachycephalosaurus. In 1943, a paleontologist named Barnum Brown made the groundbreaking discovery of a skull in the Hell Creek Formation of Montana. The dinosaur reached 15 feet in length and weighed about 990 pounds. Its Latin name, meaning fat-headed lizard, refers to its most distinctive feature, a thick dome skull up to about six inches thick which was used for butting its head. This behavior could be used for courtship or to resolve territorial dispute. Despite this feature, Pachycephalosaurus were generally peaceful creatures, spending their time grazing in clearings and avoiding conflict. We usually think of dinosaurs as fearsome lizards, often huge in size. However, there were also very interesting species on Earth that had an atypical appearance. Let's fast forward to Laurasia, the second fragment of the once unified supercontinent Pangaea. In the dense primeval forest of the early Cretaceous period, there was a small feathered dinosaur known as Archaeopteryx. The Archaeopteryx was the size of a crow. It was one of the first birds to evolve from small feathered theropods, and it spent its days hunting insects and small reptiles among the branches of the ancient trees. The discovery of Archaeopteryx dates back to the late 1850s when a German farmer named Jacob Niemeyer discovered a fossilized feather in the Solnhofen limestone formation in Bavaria, Germany. Over subsequent decades, more complete samples were found. The discovery of Archaeopteryx was significant because it presented the scientific world with the first clear evidence of an evolutionary link between birds and dinosaurs. 
Its unique combination of bird and reptile characteristics such as feathers and the wishbone challenged the conventional view of birds as a separate group of animals. Meanwhile, in a different end of the same woods, there was a chase. Leptoceratops, a ceratopsian dinosaur, was being pursued by a predator. Leptoceratops had a compact and agile body which was easily maneuvered, relying on four legs. In Greek, Leptoceratops meant thin horned face. This animal had a sharp beak, a small frill on the back of the head, and a short horn on the nose. It was about six and a half feet long and weighed approximately 330 pounds. Since this herbivorous dinosaur was relatively small, it could easily fall prey to other predators. Leptoceratops was chased by the fast Sauronothoides. Sauronothoides was a carnivorous dinosaur. It could reach up to 10 feet in length and up to 6.5 feet in height. They had an elongated skull, which was compressed vertically. They also had a relatively large brain and sharp teeth. A large, formidable sickle-shaped claw on the second toe of each foot helped to grab its prey and most likely rip it open. With their deadly tool set, their victims stood almost no chance. Moving further east as we travel through our ancient world, we meet a variety of majestic creatures. These creatures once considered the vast expanse of Asia their home. From towering herbivores to the frightening predators, these leviathans had a myriad of adaptions that allowed them to thrive in their environment. The species that undoubtedly ruled over the territory of modern Asia was one of the most ferocious predators, the Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus was a large theropod dinosaur that belongs to the Tyrannosauridae family, which also includes famous dinosaurs like the Tyrannosaurus rex and the Albertosaurus. Tarbosaurus was a bipedal predator and one of the largest carnivorous species of its time. Scientists estimate that the adult specimen was about 40 feet long and weighed up to six tons. It had a massive skull with powerful jaws, long, sharp teeth, and strong neck muscles. These features made it one of the most formidable predators of its time, allowing it to kill large prey. Tarbosaurus was first described by paleontologist Rinkin Barsbold in 1955 and given the name Tarbosaurus batar. It is known to have lived in the modern-day Mongolia region where several well-preserved fossils of the species have been discovered. Tarbosaurus is considered a close relative of Tyrannosaurus rex, and some paleontologists believe that the two species are actually one and the same, with Tarbosaurus being an Asian species of Tyrannosaurus rex genus. However, most modern research suggests they were separate species, with Tarbosaurus having distinctive features such as longer arms, more elongated skull, and a less robust build than the T-Rex. Generally, Tarbosaurus could afford to snack on dinosaurs of any size as long as it reached adulthood. Those that were younger could only manage small creatures such as a Psittacosaurus. Psittacosaurus was a genus of small herbivorous dinosaurs that lived during the Cretaceous period. They were members of the Ceratopsian family, which also includes famous dinosaurs such as the Triceratops and the Styracosaurus. Translated from Greek, Psittacosaurus means parrot lizard. The name was chosen because the skull of the Psittacosaurus has a beak-like muzzle similar to a parrot beak. The shape of the skull and the position of the eyes suggest that the head movement of the Psittacosaurus were similar to those of parrots. The beak-shaped snout is a common feature among herbivorous dinosaurs that allowed them to effectively cut through vegetation. Psittacosaurus was a quadrupial dinosaur, meaning that it walked on four legs and was one of the smallest ceratopsians measuring about six and a half feet in length and weighing only 44 pounds. With a small skull, a beak-like snout, and flat leaf-like teeth, it was able to feed mainly on soft plants. Psittacosaurus is also known for its unique cranial ornamentation which includes an elongated skull, small horns, and a frill that may have been used for defense or to show off. 
Due to its unique skeletal structure, the dinosaur can move with great speed and agility, which may have helped it evade predators. The Velociraptor was another famous predator that roamed this area. Unlike Tarbosaurus, Velociraptor was a pack animal. Velociraptors are known for their intelligence and herd hunting behavior. With their sharp claws and clever hunting tactics, they were a formidable opponent for any creature. The discovery of the Velociraptor happened in the early 20th century when the first Velociraptor fossils were discovered in the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. In 1923, a team of paleontologists led by Roy Chapman Andrews of the American Museum of Natural History discovered the first fossils of a Velociraptor in the Jadhoda Formation. The specimen was the first scientifically recorded Velociraptor. It was given the name Velociraptor mongolensis. Over the following decades, an increasing number of Velociraptor fossils were found in Asia. Velociraptor was a feathered dinosaur. This discovery was made as a result of finding fossils with feather impressions on the arms and tail. The name Velociraptor comes from the Latin words velox, meaning quick, and raptor, meaning thief or robber. The name was chosen because of this dinosaur's speed and agility, as well as its potential as a predator. The smaller size of Velociraptor, about six and a half feet long, weighing about 33 pounds, as well as the features of its skeleton, such as a large sickle-shaped claw on the second toe of each foot, suggests that it was a highly dexterous and active hunter. This claw was probably used to catch and hold prey, such as small dinosaurs and early mammals. Velociraptor is known for its intelligence and hunting behavior, which is unusual for dinosaurs. Velociraptor had a relatively large brain relative to its body size, suggesting that it was an intelligent and highly adaptable predator. It's believed that they hunted in packs and may have been able to communicate and coordinate hunting strategies with each other. A fossil of Velociraptor mongolensis and Protoceratops andrusi was found at the Gobi Desert of Mongolia in 1971. It was called the Fighting Dinosaurs. The skeleton showed two dinosaurs in battle with one another, forever imprinted in stone. The Velociraptor specimen is a sub-adult and it was preserved with one of its hind legs holding onto the frill of an adult Protoceratops. Protoceratops specimen was also preserved with its mouth open, suggesting that it had bitten a Velociraptor at the time of death. The discovery provided important data about the behavior and ecology of these two dinosaurs. The position of the skeleton suggests that the two animals were fighting at the time of death, possibly over territory or food. It also suggests that the Velociraptor was an active hunter and opportunistic predator. That means that it would use any available prey that comes its way rather than having a specific preference or diet. It also suggests that the Protoceratops was able to defend itself against it. Protoceratops was an herbivore dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous. It was a quadrupedal dinosaur, one of the smallest ceratopsians, reaching 8.2 feet in length and weighing about 176 pounds. Its skull was enhanced with strong jaw muscles and leaf-shaped teeth, suggesting it lived mainly on a diet of soft plants. Protoceratops had a beak-like snout and a distinctive skull that it was adorned with a large bony frill on the back with a pair of small horns above the eyes and a pair of large horns on the cheeks. The frill was likely used for showing off or defense. Our next location is the land of modern Africa, a group of the Spinosaurus, large carnivorous dinosaurs of that time. They hunt for food in the mangroves on the banks of a huge river. Spinosaurus was one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs that lived during the Cretaceous period. It was longer than a Tyrannosaurus rex and a Gigantosaurus. Its length was estimated at up to 60 feet with a weight of up to 20 tons. Spinosaurus is known for its large sail-like feature on its back made of elongated nerve spines. The function of this feature is still debated by scientists, but 
it is believed that it could have been used for thermoregulation, courtship, or simply to appear more intimidating. Spinosaurus led a semi-aquatic lifestyle. They could swim and hunt in the water thanks to their webbed feet. Their long, narrow jaws were studded with large, sharp teeth and were perfectly suited for holding slippery prey trying to escape, such as fish or amphibians. Spinosaurus was a rather sizable animal with large frontal limbs armed with long, sharp claws, which likely played an important role in holding and killing the prey captured using their teeth before swallowing. On another shore, there's a group of iguanodons, large herbivorous dinosaurs grazing the lush vegetation along the riverbank. Iguanodons were large herbivorous dinosaurs that moved around on all four and also presumably two legs. They were about 32 feet or 10 meters long and weighed about four tons. They had big narrow heads, a keratin beak at the front of the jaw, filled with teeth similar to those of an iguana, but larger and more frequently placed. One of the best known features of the iguanodon is the spike on the thumb of the forelimb. It's believed they could use it to inflict powerful blows on predators. Speaking of predators, in the same area, giant Carcharodontosaurus roamed in search of prey. Carcharodontosaurus was one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs of its time and probably one of the top predators of the Cretaceous period in Africa. The length of his head alone was 63 inches. The total length, according to various estimates, could reach up to 39 feet, and its weight varied from 6 to 15 tons. Carcharodontosaurus was bipedal and had a long, heavy tail to help them balance the body. It was truly a formidable predator. Their teeth reached eight inches in length. Carcharodontosaurus got its name for its serrated teeth, which were similar to those of a great white shark, the Carcharodon, which is why it is also known as the great white shark lizard. It's unlikely that any prey was able to stand against a Carcharodontosaurus specimen on its own. The dinosaur could feast on both Spinosaurus and Iguanodon. Now, let's talk about the real giants. The Hinkle Formation in South America has become famous for its large number of dinosaur finds of truly colossal proportions. Of course, our list starts with the Gigantosaurus. Gigantosaurus, one of the largest known carnivorous dinosaurs, which according to some estimates could have been even larger than the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. But Gigantosaurus was a slow-growing dinosaur that took somewhere between 20 to 25 years to reach full adult size, a time frame much longer than the T-Rexes. An adult Gigantosaurus was about 43 feet long and weighed up to 11 tons. Gigantosaurus fossils have been found in Argentina, making it one of the best known carnivorous dinosaurs from South America. This discovery supports the idea of a rich fauna and diverse ecosystem on the Gondwana continent during the Cretaceous period. Some research on social behavior suggests that Gigantosaurus may have lived in groups similar to other theropod dinosaurs. This may indicate that it was a social animal that hunted in packs. But the Gigantosaurus was not the only predator in this lush tropical environment. Competition among carnivorous dinosaurs was fierce. Gigantosaurus had to fight for territory and resources, not only with each other, but also with other carnivorous dinosaurs, such as the Maposaurus. Maposaurus is closely related to the Gigantosaurus, it was similar in size, shape, and feeding habits, and both were large carnivorous dinosaurs living in South America during the late Cretaceous and both had similar structures of the skull and jaw. Maposaurus was a large carnivorous dinosaur about 36 feet long and weighed up to five tons. The first remains of a Maposaurus was discovered in Argentina in 2000. Multiple specimens were found together, which is quite rare in dinosaur fossils. The discovery of multiple specimens suggests that Maposaurus was a social animal living in groups and working together to hunt large prey, much like modern wolves or lions. This unique behavior among theropod dinosaurs was a very important finding for understanding dinosaur social behavior. 
Speaking of Argentina, we have to mention the largest dinosaur of the Cretaceous period. In fact, this dinosaur was one of the largest known dinosaurs to have ever existed. We're talking, of course, about the Argentinosaurus. By some estimates, Argentinosaurus may have reached 115 feet in length with a total weight at about 100 tons. As a sauropod, the Argentinosaurus was an herbivore and likely fed on a variety of plants, including conifers and ferns. Its long neck and small head were adaptions designed to reach the highest branches of trees. As a large sauropod, Argentinosaurus was a slow animal, but its large size made it relatively impervious to most predators. They had a unique limb structure with very wide hips and short thigh bones. This suggests they had a wide stance and that was in order to support their massive weight. Growth lines found in the bones of Argentinosaurus suggest it had a long lifespan, potentially living up to and over 100 years. This lifespan is much longer than most other dinosaurs, most of which live between 20 and 50 years. Over millions of years throughout the Cretaceous, Australia gradually separated from Gondwana and began to shift north. A continental drift caused Australia to move away from Antarctica and eventually collide with the Eurasian Plate, forming the Australian continent as we know it today. The climate of Australia at that time was generally warm and humid, with lush vegetation covering much of the landscape. Within the continent, there were abundant systems of rivers and lakes. Climate in the region was seasonal. The dry season gave way to the rainy season. This had a significant impact on the dinosaurs inhabiting that region as they had to adapt to changing conditions in order to survive. The large herbivorous Mutaburrosaurus grazed on the lush vegetation heavily present in the region. It was a quadrupedal dinosaur with a massive body and a small head. Mutaburrosaurus was a large dinosaur estimated to reach up to 26 feet in length and weighed around three tons. Mutaburrosaurus fossils have been found in several different locations throughout Australia, suggesting this dinosaur had a wide range and lived in isolated populations. Mutaburrosaurus had a number of features that allowed them to survive in arid seasonal climates, such as their large nasal passages that helped to reduce water loss. As an herbivore, Mutaburrosaurus fed on a variety of plants, including conifers, ferns, cycads, and ginkgos. During drought seasons, however, these dinosaurs had to migrate to new locations in search of food and water. Unlike our next Ornithischian herbivores, the Leelinosaur. Leelinosaur was a genus of a small, bipedal, herbivorous dinosaur that lived during the Cretaceous. Paleontologists estimate it was no more than four feet in length and weighed about 44 pounds. Their small size, as well as the fact that the Leelinosaur were bipedal, allowed them to move quickly and nimbly through the undergrowth in search of food. The Mutaburrosaurus and the Leelinosaur lived in the same ecosystem, but differences in their size and other characteristics allowed them to draw on different resources and avoid competition. In the early Cretaceous, Australia was much closer to the Arctic Circle. This resulted in very long nights and days. Depending on the latitude, it's possible that some places didn't see the sun for weeks or even months at a time, meaning that a Leelinosaurus had to live in darkness during winter. A skull fragment from Leelinosaurus show enlarged eyes and proportionally large optic lobes, indicating their adaption to low light condition. Leelinosaur also had long, thick, fur-like bristles on their body that helped keep them warm during the cold and dark polar nights of Gondwana during the early Cretaceous. Additionally, this dinosaur's small size reduced its need for water during dry seasons. Our story should give you a general idea of where dinosaurs lived in the world during the Cretaceous period. It's worth mentioning that some of the dinosaurs we've listed could have been found in other places than the ones we indicated since the continents themselves were different in the late Cretaceous due to the movement of tectonic plates during this period of time. In conclusion, the Cretaceous was a time of great diversity of dinosaur evolution. From the huge Argentinosaurus to the small, agile Leelinosaurus, a huge variety of species flourished during this time. 
However, the Cretaceous period also marked the end of the dinosaur's reign on Earth. A global extinction caused by a meteorite impact, according to one theory, destroyed the dinosaurs along with many other species that existed at the time. This tragic event marked the end of the era of dinosaur rule, but it also opened the door for the emergence of mammals and other animal groups, which ultimately led to the diversified life we see on Earth today. Once again, our planet reminded us that change is the only constant and life is incredibly fragile. But we can still theorize what would have happened if the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction had not taken place and the dinosaurs had not met their death. What would the world look like today? Would the evolution of humanity taken a different path or would man have remained the apex predator on planet Earth?